I'm with Riton. Riton is slang for Henry. Yeah. That's your name. Yeah. Uh, French slang. Yeah, I used to live with some French guys and they used to call me that. Like, ah. And I was like, what? what's this, Riton? It's because I was going to say you're not French because you're from no, Newcastle upon Time. I lived with some you? French students when yeah. I was about 16. They were uh, always calling me Riton and I was like, ah, oh, that's a pretty good name. Because I know some people that pronounce you as Riton. Yeah. Also, I'm from, jo- <laughs> from Newcastle, so I'm a Geordie, so Riton. So like, that makes sense. It's like a bit, uh, <laughs> it sounds different up there, you know. <laughs> so where were you when you first realised that Rinse and Repeat was such a massive tune? Not just as a top 40, top 20 track, but also... You know, the response from DJs that were playing it and the response was pretty huge, wasn't it, at the time? At, at that point, I'd moved to America and I was kind of managerless, actually. I didn't have a manager. I'd moved over there. I was in a new relationship and uh, I was sort of like having a fresh start. I'd lived in London for 12 years, moved my studio over there. I was just making music, you know, and just that was one of the tracks that that sort of stuck out, you know. I think the first big reaction probably was when I put it up on SoundCloud and stuff and immediately, like, I had a lot of, like, record labels getting in touch with me about trying to sign it. I was like, whoa. An amazing achievement to be nominated, regardless of whether you win or not. You didn't in that case, but... I yeah. think you you probably won a Glammy because you what you looked amazing oh, when you went thank to, the, you. to the Grammys. You wore a, a silver <laughs> sparkly yeah. jacket and the that gold was... um, glitter shades. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. That's um, a friend of mine. He's a designer. He has um, a brand called Libertine, and it's really wild. And I'd, he'd, he's made these sequin jackets for a few years. This um, silver one he gave me is really cool. It's like one way you push it, your sequins up, it goes like matte, and one way down, it's like super glitter ball style fantastic but yeah it's amazing yeah he's everyone will want one now you realize yeah <laughs> you might get commission yeah for your yeah i mean i love those so what was the grammy experience like um, was, was that quite surreal that was completely surreal it started off with my morning was um wake up 7 a.m with the uh, makeup artist turning up for the girls in there, rinse and repeat. One of the lyrics is, "This is not how I woke up, but it's how I look now." And yeah. that's like completely her. Like she's obsessed with makeup. Like everywhere we go somewhere, she's like, "Oh, there's a Sephora here. I've got to go and like pick up some makeup." She's got eleven sisters, so she's always like having to buy makeup for them and all this. So she's obsessed with that. So a long, long morning of the waiting for people to get ready. Then we had to leave at ten because it was like an hour and a half drive in LA traffic. Our award was being presented in like two in the afternoon, so we had to be there pretty much first people. (laughs) By 12, it was like rammed, everyone going up the red carpet, lots of camera crews hanging out, taking pictures and stuff. And me and Callow walking through going, does anyone know who we are? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and then get there and then sit around for the first awards. And then then you don't win. And then you're like, well, what should we do now? <laughs> you know, Did you feel disappointed I, or was it? I wasn't like credit to my manager. He was like, listen, man, like, I don't think you're going to win it. Like, he always kept my feet on the ground with that. Yeah. He's like, don't get like hyped about it, but just go and enjoy it, you know, and, and take some pictures for your Instagram. It'll be cool. You'll get one next year. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll come on to your new single in a minute, which is money. But I just wanted to ask you about your Cure cover ver- version of um, Killing an Arab, one yeah. of my all-time favourite bands. Oh, yes. And I love your version of it. Okay. Because a lot of people don't realise that Robert Smith is into dance music because yeah. they just think he's just yeah. a bit of an old goth, but he's, he's yeah. not at all. He's, no. He's really I mean, if that. you listen to their songs like Forest and stuff, like that's just like, for me, has all the sort of same tonality and stuff as a, like, a good like quality house, like deep house song. You know, it's like, it, I'm not talking about new radio deep house i'm talking about the classic deep house just groove like very simple yeah like i think there's some definitely like a comparison between goths and and techno people you know what i mean i agree because it's massive in europe isn't it too i mean in berlin and places where you've got that industrial yeah yeah i think there's a overlap crossover there yeah yeah were you a fan of the cure before you yeah i mean it was that record was one of the first records i bought it was like on vinyl when i finally got a record player because we didn't have a record player in my mum and dad's house because it wasn't really the time the era for that it was cassettes and stuff so when i finally got a record player the, f- one, the first record i bought on 12 inch was the the cure peel sessions and i did that cover version around the time of the uh, like when when tony blair and george bush were going to to war and i and i felt like it had some sort of new meaning then even i do know the full meaning of the book it's based on the Camus like 
book. You know, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's misunderstood, isn't it? Particularly yeah. the, so- the song title. Is yeah. 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 People, but it's not. It's, it's very controversial. Yeah. It is like that. And I did want to sort of make a statement about that. I wonder, looking back, if everyone would get that now. I'm not sure. I hope so. Very but that different. track is crazy good. Yeah, it's amazing. And the lyrics are fantastic. And yeah. Then it's got a really good guitar solo on it too. Money, the new single, it's fantastic. Yeah. We're we're supporting it. Um, yeah. A great collaboration team again. You've yeah. got Carlo back yeah. to do the vocals. She's brilliant. Yes, she's she the really best. is. Very relaxed person. Super nice. She's great. She's Did you know that that track was going to be the follow up to Rinse and Repeat? I had a, I had a vocal with it, but it wasn't Carlo. Carlo was singing the female part of it, but I had the the male part, and I was really searching for the right person to do that. And Carlo worked in the same studio in in Lagos with uh, Mr. Easy sometimes and she was like hey, you got to try this guy uh, and she sent me some stuff and I was like listen to I loved it and he's really cool so him and uh, an- another Nigerian singer called Dave Davido who's incredible too yeah so it's kind of like brilliant and it's a good is, team isn't it yeah and Cal- Calo really yeah help help pull all that together yeah She's I've been pronouncing this Carlo. I've got that completely. Yeah, wrong. I think you can say Carlo. Can you? I don't know. I don't, know to, I don't even know how to say Riton or Riton. So, <laughs> Carlo. Well, it's based on because her name's Farida, so it's based on Frida Kahlo. However, you say that. Yeah. Frida you make Kahlo. it your own. Yeah. Which is the most important thing, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Riton, it's great to see you today. Thank you. Wish yeah. you all the best with money. We love it. Cheers. And um, good luck with the Grammys next year as Cheers. well. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> see you soon.